It's a little bit of a challenge, but, you know, the same thing I think goes for them is, you know, they got to kind of prepare for us and they don't know exactly what we're going to do. But it's been really good. The coaches have been really good in telling us, you know, what to expect. Welcome back to Sports Extra. Joining me in studio, Green Bay men's basketball coach Link Darner. How you doing, sir? Good, how you doing? Heard from one of your players there, Mr. Cody Schwartz, the West Appear product about just preparing for teams in this CIT tournament that you wouldn't normally face, you don't know a lot about, like just roll the ball out and let's go play. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's been it's been exciting. It's been a great thing for our team, uh, for the opportunity to keep playing and you know, it's great for us coaches, too, because we get to play some teams that we don't know much about. We know what they can do somewhat, you know, throughout the year, but not watch a lot of film on them. And now we get to try to find a game plan to see what we can do. And our guys have done a great job with it. And you can only look at so many common opponents. There's only a handful of them because it's spread out all across the country. Now, when you don't make it to the big dance, something like this, people might say, well, it's not that big of a deal. It is, though. It is for the kids and the coaches. Well, I think it's a huge deal. I mean, we get extra practice time. With our players, um, you know, the first five or six days was really good for us because we had no clue who we were going to play. Right. So we were able to work on some different things where you get in a conference play, okay, you know pretty much these teams are going to do this. This is what we can we got to work on for this game. So we started doing a couple things that we've used a little bit in these games that we weren't very good at during the year and kind of went away from because we didn't do them very well, trapping a little bit on ball screens, trapping in the half court. and. You know, it's been a great thing for our guys. I think they're excited about it, and a lot goes into playing in these games. And, you know, a lot of people do a lot of work to help us get there, and we want to make sure that they're thanked, you know, from our administration to our fans coming out, uh, you know, our ticket office having to work extra to sell tickets. But it's been great for our guys. Well, I took all my kids to the game, and the first thing they said was, where's Bakersfield? And, man, are they big. <laughs> Taking a look at some of the highlights from that game Friday night. That was the first thing from the stands that I saw. You guys were a few inches short on each of the spots on the floor, weren't you? Well, we had, they, had, they had a little bit size advantage, not only on uh, in height, but they had a couple guys that were put together. Um, you know, Man. very strong guys. The one guy inside was a beast on the glass and was a great offensive rebounder. Actually, they had out-rebounded, I think, about everybody they played this year. And, we were fortunate enough to end up winning the rebounding battle against them. Yeah, early on, they had the advantage. Yep. But in that second half, your guys definitely came to play. I mean, you led it by 10 at the break. Big sequence coming up. You know, Sandy Cohen the third. We'll talk more about him in a minute. But Travion Bell, I mean, he hit a corner three ball. And then you get the shot down low. And it just it felt like you guys played loose all across the board. Everybody was just kind of, hey, let's go, let's go hoop it up. Yeah, they play, they play very well that way. I think we've been really loose. We've really shot the ball well. And, you know, the good thing is, same thing, you know, with us not knowing a lot about our opponents. Our opponents probably don't know a lot about us. But we've done a good job. I think we're averaging about 19 assists. We're shooting over 42% from, from three. We're shooting about 85% from the free throw line in these games. That. You know, and we've played very well, and hopefully we can continue with our, with our game on, on Tuesday against Texas Southern. And when Sandy Cohen the third throws it halfway, that was three, a great pass. That I was mean, an unbelievable quarter, pass. Three quarters of the length of the court, a bounce pass on the money. That was pretty much it. Manny Patterson converts at the end, and so you live to play on. You got another one coming up on Tuesday night here at home, uh, Texas Southern. And what do you know so far? And it's really, it could be the last chance to, again for fans to see some basketball in the Phoenix. Man, yeah, still playing in April. How about that? That's a great thing. But uh, Texas Southern's a very good team. Uh, Mike Davis, who's at Detroit now, was there for many years. Uh, they went to the NCAA tournament, I think, for the last six years. Um, they got a very veteran team with a lot of transfers, a couple guys from LSU, a guy from Auburn, a um, guy from uh, Nevada. Um, so they're a very good team. They score inside, they score out, they score a lot of points. So if you want an exciting up and down game, yeah. you're probably going to see it. They are really good. They're averaging about 95 right now in the three games they've played. They're one of those teams that seems to always be on the road. They don't play a home game against a Division One opponent until the middle of January. Right. Um, they play all road games non-league. Um, you know, after we played Oregon, they played Oregon. They beat Oregon. Uh, and that shows you how good they are. But you know, I think their team has played like 23 road games, so them going on the road is going to be no Nothing. big deal to them. Nothing. Hopefully it'll be cold Tuesday night. <laughs> At least get them from the bus going into That's the gym right. for a little while. How big, and we mentioned this a little bit earlier, the importance and the value to a lot of these guys getting the extra reps in and just quality minutes. I mean, you, you had the Horizon League tournament, and with the way the format is now, you get that one home game by being in the top four seeds. 
So you had that, but then you go to Detroit, and it was one and done there. But now you've had three in a, three in a row here. Well, I mean, it's it's big. I mean, you know, the the good thing for the conference tournament this year was that uh, we took care of business. We got a home game, we got a top four seed, we won, and then you know we went over and played Wright State, and we had a bad six or seven minute stretch against them, and then we played really good, cut it cut it to a one possession game, and. You know, I still think if we make the layup to cut it to one, instead we miss it, they hit a three. That was kind of a backbreaker for us. But here we've gotten a lot of momentum, and the good thing is we've been able to play at home. You know, we went and played East Tennessee State on the road, got a good win there. Did a great job battling back. We were down nine with six minutes to go, and we went on a 21 to four run to win the game. But I think we got a lot of guys playing with a lot of confidence right now. How what has Sandy Cohen meant to this program? We watched him grow up as a kid. I mean, started right away out at Seymour High School with the Thunder and was a dominant player from the day he really started. Well, I wish we had had him for four years. Right. You know, we've had him for really only a year and a half. And, you know, he's, he's getting close to 1,000 points for his career here, which is an amazing stat. Um, this season, when it's all said and done, and, you know, you look back on the year he's had, he's probably going to be in the top 10 in almost every statistical category for a single season. You know, maybe a guy gets a three-pointer, right. maybe a guy gets free throws or, or, or points. He's going to be in there for points, rebounds, assists, steals. Um, you know, it's amazing. Field goals attempted, field goals made, th you know, three-pointers attempted. Um, he's just had a tremendous year, and he's playing really well right now. And I think one of the big things that really helped us on this run is we put, it, put the ball in his hands a little bit more the second half of the year, and he's done a great job with it. And his future is only getting brighter and brighter by us playing more games with what he can do and more people getting to see him play. And he's going to have a long professional career when he's done here playing at Green Bay. Hopefully we can get two more games out of him. Yeah, without question, one of the most complete players in Phoenix history. All right, quickly as we wrap things up, Final Four is set. Who do you got? Tony uh, Bennett, I th Auburn, I think, Virginia. I think got Virginia and, and, and Michigan State, I was a little disappointed last night in the – the outcome of the Purdue Virginia game yeah, being a boiler, yeah. but I was glad to see see Tony get there, and I think they'll win it all. I think they, you know, it's just a team of destiny this year. You know, they have a bounce like that, and I, you know, to win to win a championship, to win in the tournament, the ball's got to bounce your way, and the yep. ball bounced their way last night, and I think they'll play Michigan State in the championship game. It should be a great one. Well, I can tell you this: you've done more already here, NCAA tournament berth. A pile of games in postseason play in the last four years. Good luck. Thank you. And we'll Thanks have for having me Tuesday on. Tuesday night, stop out at the Crest Event Center, Texas Southern, at, in town to take on UW Green Bay. All right, when we come back, it's time to wrap up the show. Both the PGA Tour and NASCAR were in the